In this section, we're going to be talking about IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses are 128-bit binary numbers. If you have 128 bits, how many unique addresses are you going to have in total? Remember with binary mathematics, you're going to have 2 to the power of 128 bits, which is equals to 3.40 times 10 to the power of 38 number of possible IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses are conventionally represented in hexadecimal. This is 8 words of 16 bits. Remember that 128 bits is a very large number to remember. So we represent it using hexadecimal numbers. As you can see on the screen, this is a typical IPv6 address. It's um, represented as 2607 colon 8400 colon 2880 colon 0004 colon 0000 colon 0000 colon 80DF colon 9D13. Leading zeros can be dropped in hexadecimal numbers. The largest contiguous run of all zero words can also be replaced. As you can see with the example, 0004 can be represented by 4. You see 8 zeros can also be represented by double colon. So you see that the IPv6 number that we provided can be shortened in the form of 2607 colon 8400 colon 2880 colon 4. Then you have double colon represented the 8 zeros followed by 80DF colon 9013. We're going to show you a brief representation of how you convert binary to hexadecimal. Remember that hexadecimal is base 16. Binary is base 2. So with hexadecimal numbers, you're going to have numbers from 0 all the way to F. 10 is represented by A. 11 is represented by B. 12 is represented by C. 13D, 14E, and 15F. As you can see on the screen, 0 in hexadecimal to binary is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. You see that E is 1, 1, 1, 0, and F is 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can use this sheet to figure out how to convert from binary to hexadecimal. So what are the IPv6 rules? With IPv6, every subnet is a slash 64 with the exception of slash 127, which is also used for point-to-point -point links in this case. The remaining 64 bits can be assigned by hand or picked automatically. Remember, all zero address is reserved. Remember when we were doing IPv4, all zero addresses were reserved for network addresses. In this case, it's for IPv6 is for subnet router any cast address. With the exception, of course, this is slash 127, which is a point point to point link, which only has two IP addresses, and you can use 000 in that case. There are also some special prefixes in IPv6. We did not cover those in IPv4, but you have some special prefixes. One of them is a link local address, which starts with FE80, double column. You have approximately two to the power of 61 subnets in IPv6 space, which is more than we can use as we're running out of IPv4 addresses, which is why we moved to IPv6 addresses. What does a typical end user allocation in IPv6 addressing look like? The typical end user allocation is a slash 48. As you can see, you have 128 bits for the IPv6 number, so you would reserve the 464 bits for the network prefix, like we said in the previous slide, that all addresses are slash 64, and the host bit would have 64 bits as well. So a typical end user allocation is a slash 48. So now we ask the question, how many slash 64 networks can you build from a slash 48 allocation? Remember, we're using bits, so it's still the same binary mathematics that you applied in IPv4 that you will be using in IPv6. We'll show you briefly. If you have 128 bits and you have a slash 48 allocation, how many bits are going to have remaining? 
you will have 128 minus 64 minus 48, which will give you 16 bits. So the number of networks, slash 64 networks, in a slash 48 prefix is going to be 2 to the power of 16, which will give you 65, 5, 3, 6. Now, imagine you are assigned the IPv6 prefix 2001 colon db8 colon 123 double colon slash 48. This is represented on the screen as 2001 colon 0db8 colon 0123 colon followed by all zeros. What is the lowest slash 64 network that you can get from this slash 48 prefix? Remember that you have 16 bits in this case for the slash 64 prefix as we had shown you in the previous slide. So the lowest network of slash 64 prefix that you're going to get is going to be 2001 colon db8 colon 123 colon 0000 as shown in red double colon followed by a slash 64. This is simply written as 2001 one colon db8 colon one two three double colon slash 64. Remember that all zeros are represented by double colon. The highest slash 64 network you're going to get is going to be 2001 colon db8 colon one two three colon fff double colon slash 64. Remember you have 16 bits for the number of networks in this case as shown in the previous slide. How many ways do you have of allocating the host part? The first option is that you have is that you can do it automatically from the MAC address, which is called Statelet Auto Configuration. This is not recommended for servers because if you change the NIC address, the IPv6 address will change. You can also number sequentially from one and use the last octet of the IPv4 address. The third option that you have is you can embed the whole IPv4 address inside of the IPv6 address. An example is shown on the screen. You have this address 2607 colon 8400 colon 2880 colon 4 double colon ATDF colon 9D13. You can see that the last two words are simply the IPv4 address converted to hexadecimal. In this case, the IPv4 address is 128.223.157.19 in decimal. If you convert this to hex, you're going to have 80 for 128. 223 is represented by DF. 157 is represented by 9D. And 19 is represented by 13 in hexadecimal. Alternatively, you can actually write the IPv4 address inside of the IPv6 address as shown on the screen. So we're going to give you notes on IPv6. It's broadly similar to IPv4. The concepts are the same. Remember, it's still binary. We're just representing the numbers in hexadecimal to make it easier to remember and write. ARP is replaced by NDP in this case, and you have various forms of IPv6 client configuration options like we had shown you on the previous slide. The first one is the stateless auto configuration using route advertisements, or you can use stateless auto configuration plus stateless DHCP version six, or you can use stateful DHCP version six. Interfaces typically get both a link local address and one or more routable prefixes. When you're using IPv6, you typically have a dual stack, which means you're using both IPv4 and IPv6 side by side. 